So now work group and domain guys. Okay. In generally, we are all in the work group, all your systems in a work group. Just before I told peer to peer, the same concept it is as a work group concept. In a work group, either as your single device or a multiple devices are in the same work group or in the work group. It can be in the same work group model or maybe in a just a, it is in the work group. Thing is, there are individual pieces. Okay. For example, this is my PC one. So I put a name C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, PCR. There is no centralized system, no centralized control, or no centralized administration. Every PC has a, their own individual PCs. Okay. For example, I have a, a local administrator account. For example, there is a user. There is a user. So Aman is a user in a C1 computer. So C1, there is a computer or a laptop. So Aman is a user. By default, he is an administrator of C1. For example, he is an administrator. So what Aman can able to do it? What Aman can able to do it? Aman can able to install an application C1, uninstall an application, changing settings, changing some permissions. Okay. So uh, disk management, service management, all these things he can able to do. He can change the uh, IP addresses. You can change the passwords. You can add accounts, standard other other accounts. You can able to add it. So Aman is an administrator of C1. So local administrator. You can use the word is local administrator. Means C1's administrator is Aman. Local administrator is Aman. Okay, that's it. For example, for C2 means other computer. So I have a other uh, user, for example, Swati is there. The two Swatis are there, but I am using common word uh, as a Swati is there. Okay. So is administrator of so Swati system. Swati use uh, log, Swati is a local administrator. So uh, she can able to install an applications, uninstall an application, change the settings, uh, do the uh, we can she can able to change, add accounts and maybe uh, disk management service management okay all these things so they can able to do on the c2 system okay like that every user every system for example this is rahul okay uh, so vivek uh, just i'm searching for a Small names. Anant is also there. Okay. So every system has their own local administrator. Every system has their own local administrator. That user can able to manage their system only. Not depends upon any centralized control or a centralized administration. So Work group means decentralized administration. No centralized control. No centralized control. Every system or a PC has their own administrator, local administrator is there, has their own local administrator account. One PC user cannot log into other PC. For example, here, Aman want to log into 
C2 PC, so he cannot log in. Why? Amal user information, password information, okay, in the C1 only, not in C2. Swati's user information, password information stored in C2, not in C1 or C3 or C4. It's only in C2. So one user cannot log into other devices. One system user cannot log into others. Okay, because your users, information, passwords, settings stored in their own PCs only, not in centrally, not in other systems. Can control or manage individually. For example, in my organization, I have a 10 computers are there, or 20 computers, or 100 computers are there. I uh, want to administrate, I want to manage these systems. For example, I want to install an application in this system. You have your own laptop or a desktop, you can manage as an individual user. But in an organization, you, you have a multiple computers. It means the number of users are higher and more number of systems are there. So, for example, you are an administrator, general, general position is system admin kind of stuff. You have to install an application here and here and here. So you have to go to each and every PC to install an application or to do certain settings to each and every PC. OK, so uh, there is some application I have to install in every PC. So I have to go to each and every PC. 10 computers are OK, 20 is OK, but think about 50, 100, 200 computers are there. Each computer has to go and do the certain thing. It is very difficult. More number of systems or PCs in organization increases. It's a difficult to manage. Guys, so this is a, our work group model. See, it is, uh, I have given some names. We can change the names also. Uh, Amit, uh, Anand, Neetu, Siva is there. Okay, we can change as per uh, ours also. Okay, so for example, you take PCA. Okay, so as I said, every system has their own local administrator. So in for PCA, Amit is a local administrator. So what he can do, he can change settings. Install and uninstall an application. You can give permissions. You can do disk management, service management, all these things in settings. You can able to. So Amit can manage PCA, but not other PCs. Means he cannot manage B or C or a D kind of stuff. Need to use our information or Amit user information stored in PCA, on the information stored in PCB. Need to information stored in PCC and the Shiva information stored in PCD. Okay, that's the line I given here. So, uh, you are late for us. <laughs> so, um, Okay. Make or change settings by going to each and every piece. For example, you have a 10, 20 computers or a 50 computers or 100 computers in your network. So you have to do certain change or you have to do certain task in that individual pieces. Then you have to go to each and every. I have my own laptop. If I want to do certain settings, I will do it. But in organization, you have multiple devices, multiple computers. You have to manage it. You have to go by one by one. 
So this is about your work group guys. Decentralized administration, no centralized control, no centralized storage of any user account or any other information. Every PC has their own administrator. I will give you two screenshots after this one. So this is so one good screenshot. It's my old laptop screenshot. That's the point. OK, so what I have done, so I went to this. Settings guys. System. Settings system go to about. Go to about. Rename this PC advance. If you are in a work group, it shows it is a work group, but I'm not in a work group. I'm in a domain. OK, if I'm work group, it shows I'm a member of work group, but I'm not, not in a domain. So I said it's my old laptop. You can see work group name is work group. It's not showing domain. So it is member of work group. So meaning is this system is in work group. OK, this system is in the work group. How to check? Are you in a work group or not? So our work group or in a domain. So generally. Go to settings. Or uh, about your PC. That is also you can do it. About your PC. Select uh, Rename this PC advance. So you can see if it is showing domain name. Some domain name it is showing means you are in a domain. OK, so and also you can try to click on change then member of work group. You're a member of and work group means your work group member of domain means you are in a domain. So that is your, uh, uh, your desktop computer name. OK, but if in case it is showing work group name is work group or member of your work group and work group name is work group means you are in a Work group. Guys, understand how to check are you in work group or domain? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Guys, next one is domain kind of plans. So, in this one, there is a centralized controller. Centralized administration so i have a devices in the network devices are in the net so there is a certain challenges by in the work group model mainly in a organizational level not individual level in a organizational level there is a challenges so in this one so what I've done, so this is C1 PC, C2, C3, C4, and C5. And I this is my domain in your army, guys. So your net domain means the domain has a name. For example, my domain name is Latif.com. My domain name is Latif. This is my domain name, just a name. OK. So this is a, a domain controller. OK, this is a domain controller, which is nothing but a server. This is nothing but a. Domain controller, which is nothing but a. Server. It is nothing but a, a server. So this is a domain controller and this is my domain name. These are the pieces. They join into the domain. They join into the 
domain. How they can able to join the domain? First, the domain controller and the devices should be in the same domain. Okay. So I uh, just uh, got a little breakout. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give, just uh, relax for a minute, guys. Just I uh, will have some water and drink. Just a minute. Okay, so can you able to hear? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we'll go to this point, guys. This is a domain controller, which is nothing but a server. In this domain controller, it maintains a database. It maintains a database. Okay, and it to do another role is there that is called a authentication. First, we'll talk about a database. What is this database contains? User information. So I can create a users directly in this server. So it stores in this database only. So I no need to go to each and every PC to create a users. Simply centrally, I can create a users. I created a user one, user two, user three, like that. So with the individual names, we can create it just for our understanding and uh, space. I'm creating like this. Okay. I created a users. User database means user information, user password information is stored in this database not in an individual pieces. Next. Computer information also stores. The devices, those join into the domain. The devices which joined, joined into the domain, that devices information stores. For example, C1 is joined, C2 is joined, C3 is joined, C4 is joined. How to join? Uh, already I joined. Okay. So here in this picture, you can understand. So here, member of domain, member of domain, give the domain name, select a domain name and give the domain name, click OK and give authentication. So the device will be joined. Member of domain. Okay, so even myself, I, I'm in a domain, right? So then yeah, uh, about your PC, if it is in a line uh, in this one, so about your PC, rename this PC. So change, so member of domain, select member of under that one domain, give the domain name. Give the domain name. So you are in the domain part. So once you are joined, okay, 
Yeah, very good. So first of all, in uh, settings, system, yeah, what? Okay, rename this PC, change domain, and uh, give the domain name. You can also see your domain name. But I'm, I'm not uh, I'm removing, just highlighting that one, guys. It's a new PC which is given from the office. So obviously, you have too many details. It is already domained because this device can be controlled and any user can able to access. Who are can able to access those who are in my domain? People can able to access. So those devices are joined in the domain. Their database is also stores in the database. For example, I have a printer. It is a kind of network printer, of course. So I have a printer name is to P1. So what I have a printer name called P1. I have a printer name called a P1. So it is also in the domain. So then it is that information is also stored. So what is the database stores? User information, computer information in the domain. Resource information means printer, scanner. These are also resources. Resource information, group information, service information stored in this database. Okay. Let's understand domain joining database, centralized server, domain controller. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, point is here I said database. What is the database contains? User information, group information, computers information, resource information, and service information stored in database. Now, users are located in a domain controller, but user has to log in into computer, right? Now, I try to log into this C1. C1 do not have user1 information. So what it will happen? It will send a request to the domain controller. PC C1 send a request to the domain control because C1 is in the domain domain. So it will send a request to domain controller, verify user one information with this particular password. User one said it is username is user one and the password is particular this. So please verify these details. So it send a request to the domain controller, verify username and password. So domain controllers verifies, yes, this particular user is a correct user information, password information is correct, so he's authenticated. User is got authenticated by domain controller. The next step is, the next step is user should access his computer, right? I log into the computer. For that, I need a authentication. Authentication is done by domain controller. Next, I have to access the computer. Means I need a authorization. Again, I will ask the domain controller, is this particular user is allowed to access C1 or not? 
User is available. Yes, user is information is correct. Authentication. Is he allowed to access C1? Yes, that is called a authorization. So our domain controller do authenticate the users when they log into network. Correct? Log into a system. We can say authenticate and as well as authorization also doing by our domain controller. So domain controller having two things. One is active directory database maintenance because it's a Windows concept. OK, <laughs> so domain controller or active directory the database to store user information, computer group. Resource informations like a printer scanner kind of stuff, of course, and service information. And uh, this active directory at domain controller, it authenticate users when they log into computers or when they log into network. OK, so guys, users are not belongs to any. Computers there are in the domain controller. So these users can log into any domain computer. Any domain computer. So what is domain computer? Domain computers. The computer which is joined into the domain called a domain computer. See C1, C2, C3, C4 are joined into the domain. So in the domain controller, their names are there. Those devices join into the domain. So their information is available in the domain database in the database. OK, so users in the domain called a domain users. These users are called a domain users. These computers are a domain computers. Domain users can log into domain computers. Any user can able to log into any domain user can log into any of domain computer until unless there is a restriction. You, you create some restriction, then only you can do it. So user five, user two, user to log in in morning the morning time, user to log out, user five log in here. User seven is logging here after user three log out. Okay, user uh, six is logging here after user four log out. Morning duty, evening duty. For morning duty, user is done. Then afternoon or evening duty, then user to log into same computer. But whatever it is, guys, who is this going to authenticate? Domain controller is authenticate users because domain controller in the database we have user information and computer information plus users authentication also done by your domain database so guys again users in the domain called a dom users in the domain we call it as a domain users computers in the domain we call it as a domain computer Domain users can log into any of the domain computers. I try to log in with a, a user 8 in this C5. Can I log in or not? Can I log in or not? I try to log in with a user 8 in C5. Can I log in or not? Yes. Yes, sir. OK. Any other responses? This is a user 8. Want to log into C5. Can I log in or not? Yes, yes sir. How, how many times? Yes, we can log in in the user, say, computer file. No one is living. So 
as I said, domain user can log into domain computer. Okay. So C1, C2, C3, C4 are domain computers because they join into the domain. Their information is in a domain controller. Okay. So user 8 is a domain user. User 8 can able to log in C1 or C2, C3, C4. And uh, C5 is not in my domain. C5 is not in my domain. If you see the list, C1, C2, C3, C4 computers only in my domain. C5 is not in my domain. It's in same network, but not in my domain. If, if your computer is not in my domain, it's not my it is not my domain computer. So domain user cannot log into other than domain computers. OK. Got the point? OK, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so guys, each statement, each picture representation is important. So please, anything you learn, look at that picture, look at the points, and uh, try to not understanding, try to questioning. OK, what is this? How it is look like and all. If you do it, then only you will understand. OK, that's why it is called a logical administrative boundary of users and computers. See, user 8 cannot log into C5 because of C5 is not in the domain. OK, so same thing only I've written here. So a uh, small point I have to add it uh, uh, thing is. As I said in a work group guys, I have a 50 work group pieces in my network in our organization. I have to do certain settings. I have to install some applications. I have to modify some firewall settings related or maybe it is network related settings. I have to do it. So in a 50 computers, it is very difficult to go to each and every PC and do the settings. OK, so. Point is. This is a domain controller means it is a. Uh, simply entire domain is controlled by this domain controller server only. There is a domain administrator is there. There is a domain admin account is there. This domain admin account is the administrator of entire your domain is the administrator of entire your domain. OK. It's the administrator of entire your domain. OK. So he the user account can be able to control each and every piece. Next one is guys, I said. Group policy. What is this group policy? I want to deploy certain settings to the 50 computers. If it is a work group, it is very difficult to have to go by one by one. But now it is in a domain environment. So I will create a, a group policy object. I do what are the settings are required. I will add all the settings. Here. Next. These settings are linked at domain level only. Domain controller only. I create a group policy and all the two settings. So these settings will automatically apply to the devices or a users, means computers and users. These settings will automatically apply. Those in the domain, domain users, domain computers will affected with this settings. For example, I have to do a firewall setting. I have to go to each and every PC, then I have to do the firewall setting. I have to do uh, yeah, some application install in a 50 computers. 50 computers are in a domain. So I create a group policy in my domain controller. I do the other settings requirement. Then I uh, apply the group policy. The group policy is applicable to the people who are where I get given a link. All these people will affect with that policy. OK. So. Points are again, guys, look at here. 
what is a domain kind of stuff? It is a centralized administration. We have a centralized controller. We have a, there is a centralized administration and there is a centralized. So domain is a comes under centralized administration. Work group is a decentralized administration means you can administrate centrally. There is a centralized controller for centralized administration, which is called as a domain controller, which is nothing but a server. Domain administrator is an admin for all systems in the domain. Domain administrator is an admin for all systems in the domain. Okay. So in this domain controller, we have an Active Directory database. Okay which is contains user information, group, computer, services, resource information stored in this centralized system or a server or a, you can say domain controller. So where it will stores in the Active Directory database. The database name is NTDS. So in this domain controller means the centralized server or a centralized controller contains a database which is having information about users, groups, computers, services, and resource information. Users in the domain called a domain users, they can log into any domain computer by default. We can enforce Various type of settings to the large number of users and computers means in a work group we have to manage devices individually, not centrally. But in a domain, we can manage or administrate or control centrally. So how to do it? You want to deploy in a setting, or you want to deploy an application, or you want to deploy is uh, a folder redirection kind of stuff okay so means uh, you want to deploy a resource like a printer to a, a number of multi large number of users and computers we can use group policies so what is a group policy guys we can enforce various type of settings to the large number of users and computers in the domain within the domain object so here it is, user information, user name, passwords stored in a domain controller. Just for our understanding, there's so many things. Okay, computers joined in a domain called a domain computers. Users in a domain called a domain users. User domain user can log into their domain computers. User domain user can log into in their any domain computer. Domain admin account is admin stator for all devices in the domain. There is a domain admin stator account. The people who in the, that domain admin account is an administrator of all devices. And there is no individual administrator. Domain administrator is a overall administrator. Domain user login to domain computer. Domain controller authenticates users. Domain user is logged into domain computer. Who is going to authenticate? Not the computer. Domain controller authenticates the domain users. Okay. So how to check? You are in a work group or a domain. So that is a, this kind of stuff. Hello, sir. Who has the access for the group policies? Okay. Who has the access for the group policies? Uh, okay. Who will set no. the group policies? Yeah. Who will? That's a good question, actually. But I have to try to find an answer. Yes. Uh, point is, guys, every PC, individual by group PCs, okay, having their local group policies. Every PC has their own local group policies. But what we are talking is just centralized group policies. It means you create a group policy in a domain controller, which is applicable for users, 
some due test kind of stuff, right? So who will create this group policy system administrator means this server administrator will create a group policies. OK, so it is applying to multiple users. For example, user one, user two, user three. I am applying this for users. So those users where it is logging, the setting will be applied. For example, um, um, so you can you see a background? This is the default background of this piece. Some people will change the default background. So I have a hundred computers are there. People are changing their background. They put some people put a, a new movies running, right? So, so John Wick, and maybe they'll put a PS2. Okay, some fans are uh, Tamil fans are there is a PS2 picture back then, or John Wick. Some skull, some bikes, puppies, some yeah, memes kind of stuff. No, I don't want make people to put a whatever they want it. I want to put a setting that all hundred members should get a same type of desktop background. Only my company logo, Savantis logo, they should get it. So what to do? Okay, so in my uh, server active directory means my in my domain controller, I will create a group policy. So I create one uh, logo or a desktop wallpaper kind of stuff. I attach that wallpaper to settings. Okay, apply the settings to all 100 users, all 100 computers. So whenever they log in, they will see only our logo company love or a, a motivational everyday motivational kind of stuff daily motivational one message it will appear or teamwork related or company related or maybe project related background i want which background i want to set for 100 users all 100 users will get that maybe 100 users are not one unit right so maybe 10 units i divide this 100 users into for example five 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 parts. I want to apply differently. Also, we can able to apply differently. Point is that. OK. okay sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just for our, our understanding, you, you have you seen my old laptop in starting classes. We use a my old laptop, so many icons are there, so much of data is on my desktop. Okay, so that is a work group PC. No one can able to control me. Okay, no one can able to control me. I can do it because it's my work group PC, my personal laptop it is. But this laptop is belongs to uh, Savantis. Okay, so of course, there is some icons compared to last week to now this week. Okay, there is four or five icons are showing on the screen. Very less data, only one file it is I created. For example, my organization um, thought people should not store any data on the desktop. So they will create a policy, apply the policy to the all the employees. So any employees trying to create a data on the screen, on the desktop, it won't accept. Like I right click, new. File I want to create. It's automatically denies. It will show us you do not have these permissions. Contact your administrator. So this is the rule I created. So make sure that so user should not be there. So that is the power of group policies. If you want to know there are one or two group policies I we are created and showed to the people. Simply can go to the YouTube and go to my uh, batch. Uh, my cognition batches are there batch 17, batch 2, batch uh, 9, something. So the, they are having this Windows administration classes. Otherwise, I will search and send it to you to know about here. And I will I will forward one video also. Please, uh, that one also. This is the last part for today, guys. Um,
because it's already one o'clock. We are here by one o'clock. So while I'm explaining about Azure AD, I told about uh, cloud and cloud other services. I think that is the last class I have taken for the last batch. Okay. What is a AD domain or a domain? It's domain, it's actually we it's we, it's not AD domain, it is a domain only. But why I write it AD domain? That is also there is a reason. Because there is a question, what is a domain? What people will do it without searching, without uh, uh, remembering anything, what we speak, they will search in a Google. What is a domain? So you will get a different kind of answers in the Google because domain is an English word. That's it. Just the English word, not a specific kind of stuff. Like for example, I'm working in a networking side. I'm a network administration. So what is your domain means? My domain is networking domain. For example, I'm working on a Linux administration. My domain is Linux. I'm usually do a Python and Java testing. I'm a tester. My domain is testing. Okay, so it's a grouping. Domain means the group. So which is a specific group. Okay, that's why when you search for a domain, you will get a different kind of answers. Even some people will tell google.com it is a domain. Of course, it is a domain, but what domain means? URL is not a domain, but there is a domain name. Domain name is different. Domain is different. Domain controller is different. <laughs> okay, things are there. Okay, so when you want to search in a Google, search as a for our heading domain. Okay, then you will get a active directory related answer. Okay, if you search domain, you will get some different different answers, but search in an AD domain, so you will know what is exact our active directory meaning. Guys, just listen carefully, just five minutes max, five, 10 minutes in case. Domain or active directory domain is a logical administrative boundary of users and computers. See it is why I put at this blue line because it is an administrative boundary. Even C5 or a C6 are in the same network, but users cannot log into C5. Group policies won't apply to C5. Why? Because of it is not in the our domain. Group policies applicable to C1, C2, C3. User can log into C1, C2, C3, C4. Users can able to access a printer because of they are in the same domain. So that's why even the devices are in the same network, but they should be in the same domain to access resources, computers, and stuff. So a two directory domain or a domain is a logical administrative boundary of users and computers. Okay. Work group and domain difference is also important. Guys. Understand point? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, at the time of domain, I told uh, this database and uh, authentication also. Again, we'll see that one, guys. Domain controller, how it is become a domain controller by installing add to directory services. It is a Windows server concept only. It is, of course. Okay. What is this add to directory? There is no answer for what is an add to directory. It is a kind of domain services. Okay. It is a role in the Windows server. That is not even an answer also. Okay. So, Add to directory, guys, two points is important. Again, I'm telling there's two points are important. Add to directory, database, authentication. Add to directory, if you got a question about what is an add to directory, add to directory database stores identity of users, groups, computers, resources, and services information. Or at least to list, Add to directory database contains information about users, 
probes computers okay next add to directory authenticates users you you got that point right so user is trying to log into the c1 and c1 is not authenticate user one who is authenticating your active directory at domain controller the active directory authenticates user user and computers uh, it authenticates users when they log into domain computer different ways you will get the sentence guys when user is log into network when user is log into domain when user is log into domain computer all the same okay it authenticates users so add to directory two primary things database and authentication the name of database every database has a name the file name the database file name is ntds.dit new technology directory service directory information tree new technology directory service directory information tree okay next authentication protocols what are the authentication protocols means database i told but active directory another thing is authenticating so it use a protocol called kerberos kerberos authentication protocol okay but when you search about active directory or ad adds in the google you will get another answers that answers also i'm telling that is of course active directory is a microsoft's uh, related service only active directory is introduced in 2000 server server windows server 2000 windows nt servers not use the concept of active directory they use a other concept means that is uh, sam database concept they are using okay ntlm authentication but active directory use ntds.dat database and kerberos authentication which is introduced in windows server 2000 it is also there in 2003 server this same active directory database name is upgraded to adds active directory domain services in windows server 2008 onwards we are using active directory domain services earlier name is active directory okay so why it is a domain services because active directory other services also there active directory certification services active directory right management services active directory uh, uh, federation services lightweight directory services these kind of services also there so main active directory concept and the name is upgraded to active directory domain services it is windows server 2008 okay guys understand what is an active directory two major points and their names yes sir new name is azure another thing is azure ready now it is become more popular it is active directory service only. not a new or a world kind of stuff active directory domain services is there but in azure ad is also there azure is a cloud platform guys azure is a microsoft cloud public cloud like you have aws google cloud platform so azure is also a cloud platform from cloud platform if you are getting active directory services think like this azure is a microsoft from azure you are getting active directory services instead of installing into a a physical server in your premises and maintaining their uh, backup servers and all so you can simply go to the microsoft azure take azure active directory service and you can utilize it so that is Azure AD means it's Azure is a Microsoft Cloud and you are getting a active directory services from Azure. That's the point I wanted. Okay. So remaining part uh, we will see tomorrow. Uh, we will see about a uh, um, DHCP uh, and a DNS also. Okay.
and if possible, I will try Office 365 uh, complete tomorrow or Outlook. Either one I will try. Hello, sir. What about uh, what about LDAP, sir? In that LDAP is also authentication protocol. Kerberos and LDA both are authentication protocol. Kerberos usually used by Microsoft only. LDAP is a open protocol. Means any system can use LDAP uh, protocol authentication protocol system. Okay, sir. Okay, I'm uh, stopping recording.